This is the easiest, most simple way to get yourself some kills in normal mode, Vorkath and Zemmer Eagle. We're gonna get ourselves kills that are under five minutes long, where we used absolutely no food and Revolution did about 95% of our inputs. And to make it even better, this method is so awesome that we don't even have to move to dodge any of the mechanics. We literally stand in the exact same tile for the entire boss fight. We're gonna be using low tier gear. We're not gonna be using expensive Blood Reaver scrolls or anything like that. And all we're gonna do is get some nice, easy, simple Vorkath kills right now. The first thing I'm gonna strongly recommend is a Salve Amulet because Vorkath is classed as undead. This is gonna give you a ton of extra damage and accuracy, but it does come with one drawback, which is that your protection prayers are gonna be less effective than they would be if you'd been using an Amulet of Souls or an Essence of Finality. And because of that, we're gonna actually be using Powder of Protections. It's the green one, not the Powder of Item Protection that's blue, but the Powder of Protection. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take your protection prayers and instead of being 50% effective, they're actually going to be 60% effective, which will help an absolute ton while you're wearing the Salve Amulet. As for the preset and the invent, let's go through it right now. First off, in my pocket slot, I've got the Nexus. It's extremely easy to make, and I would strongly recommend making it. If you have the requirements for Vorkath, you have the requirements to make the Nexus, and it will take you about two minutes. This is just going to hold all of your Necromancy runes and your Ectoplasm, making room for more food. When you're looking at the setup, I'm wearing five-piece Death Warden gear, which is the tier 90 Necromancy tank gear. If you want to move forward with the power gear, that will be completely fine too. You're going to eat a little more food, but it'll work. And as always, if you have the tier 95 gear of any kind, that will be better. But we're balling on a budget today. As for my weapons, it's the tier 90s. I'm also using a Zuck cape in this video and for this method, although it is not 100% required, we actually didn't end up using it all that much. So if you don't have it, you will get by just fine. That said, if you want an easy way to get a Zuck cape, I have a video on that that I've linked in the description down below. Outside of that, I'm using the Aegis Aura for 10% damage reduction. I'm wearing a Reaver ring just for the power bonus. And I've also got a Jazz book in my pocket slot. Now for the invent, I've got an overload, an adrenaline potion, I've got some prayer potions, some sardomen brews, and some blue blubber jellyfish. I also have a rune pouch with runes for the Prism of Restoration, because as of right now, familiars take a lot of damage in the boss fight. It's probably a bug, so this might get fixed in the future, but for now, you're gonna want the Ancient Spellbook and Prisms of Restoration to drop and heal your familiar. Outside of that, I've got a Vit Pot, some Vulnerability Bombs for 10% extra damage, and then I've also got an Amulet of Souls swap in my invent. This is absolutely not necessary, but there's a part of the fight where the Salve Amulet doesn't work, so if you want to switch to an Amulet of Souls or an Essence of Finality, be my guest. One other extremely important note while we're getting geared is that you do need anti-fire protection from Vorkath, because even though he isn't completely classed as a dragon, he's not not classed as a dragon. So because of that, make sure that either you're using an overload salve like I am in this video, or you've got some kind of anti-fire protection from a super anti-fire potion. For familiars, a Blood Reaver would be the best familiar to bring here, auto-firing at a frequency of either one or two, but that is extremely expensive. It will actually cost you millions of coins per hour to use a Blood Reaver, so we're not going to do that in this video. Instead, we're going to take what I'd say is the second best option, which is the Hellhound. Especially when combined with the Aegis Aura, the damage reduction is going to be extremely nice, and it's going to make the boss a lot more forgiving than it otherwise would be. With that out of the way, let's talk about our Rebo Bar and then let's get into the boss fight. The Rebo Bar is extremely simple. We've got Conjure Undead Army, I've got Command Ghost, Command Skeleton, and then I've got Soul Sap, Reflect, Touch of Death, Devotion, Blood Siphon, and then my Necromancy Auto Attack. This Rebo Bar has two primary jobs. The first job is gonna be to build up all of our stacks so that we can manually spend them. Whenever we have three souls, we're gonna fire them off with a volley of souls. And whenever we have over six necrosis stacks, we're gonna use Finger of Death. Death Skulls can also be used whenever, and that's basically the entire manual input for the entire boss fight. But the second job for this Rebo Bar is also reducing the damage we take just a little bit. Reflect is gonna reduce our damage taken by half for 10 seconds, and Devotion is also an extremely good method to take a little bit less damage. Blood Siphon is gonna keep our life points topped up. So with this bar, you shouldn't have a lot of manual inputs required, just kind of eat food when you need it, spend stacks when you have them, and you should be able to cruise to some very consistent, easy kills in normal mode. Let's get into it. To start the boss fight, all you're gonna do is click on the statue in the town hall and then choose your desired mode. Once you've got it set up, you're just gonna click start and you're gonna spawn in an instance version of the fort. As soon as you click on the gate, the boss encounter is gonna start. So this would be a time to make sure your stat boosting potions are active, your prayers are active, and you've used the darkness incantation. Once that's out of the way, we're gonna click on the door and we're gonna get into it. As of right now in normal mode, you have to deal with the points of power before the actual boss fight starts. And there are three that I've marked on screen on this map. Each one corresponds to a different mechanic in the boss fight, but with this setup, we're actually not going to worry about any of the optional points of power because they take a lot of time to actually deactivate, and that's just going to waste you time in the long run, and it's not necessary at all. So we're just going to head all the way to the furthest west point of power, and we're just going to do that one. We're going to skip the other two, and we're just going to deal with the additional mechanics. 
In order to deal with these points of power, you have to deal with the undead giant and then click on the green area in the middle that I've marked. The undead giant is actually probably as hard as the rest of the boss fight. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea why he's so difficult to kill. Uh, and he's also not classed as undead, despite his name being an undead giant. So that's an interesting one. Uh, I'd recommend praying protect from melee for this part of the boss fight. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna whittle him away by spending our stacks as we have them. Nothing super fancy to do here, nothing too crazy. The Ruvo bar should keep you alive, especially once it cycles through the point of using Blood Siphon, because Blood Siphon is just gonna do a ton of damage to everything around you that's meleeing you. Keep your life points nice and topped up. As soon as the giant dies, we're gonna click on the point of power, and then that is gonna send us in to the boss fight. The Vorkath boss fight has a couple main mechanics, and we're gonna go through them sort of as the boss fight happens and as we get into it. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by clicking on Vorkath and attacking him. You're also gonna wanna position yourself sort of in between Vorkath and Zamorgul, kind of where we are here. This is because Zamorgul is gonna be periodically spawning in allies to help in the boss fight, and this is gonna allow our area of effect abilities to clear the majority of the minions without having to do anything special. And all we're doing right now is we're quite simply just spending our stacks as we have them. You'll notice that I've got my conjures going and my revo bar is keeping them all under control. So really, all I'm looking at is I'm looking at my souls that I've marked on screen. As soon as I have three, I'm gonna use Volley of Souls. And then whenever I have more than six necrosis stacks, I'm also gonna be using Finger of Death. Death Skulls is another good one that I'm just using as often as I can, and whether you do or don't have a Zuck Cape, you have the option to do this. You'll notice under Vorkat's HP bar that there's a power level, and it's currently at 75%. Periodically throughout the fight, empowering zombies are gonna spawn in, and you're gonna see one on the screen right now that I've marked with an arrow. This zombie is gonna walk towards Vorkath, and if it gets to Vorkath, the power level is gonna go up by 25%, and you're gonna take a little bit more damage. The reason we're standing where we're standing is a lot of the time, you won't actually have to kill it at all, because as you can see here, the death skulls that I just used completely wiped the thing. That said, they've only got 3,000 life points, so if you see one getting close to Vorkath, all you gotta do is click on it for a second, and you'll be good to go. I'm also gonna note here that for the entire boss fight, we're gonna pray Deflect from Necromancy. The overheads are kind of a weird one in this boss fight because Vorkath is gonna be attacking us with magic and Zimmer Eagle is gonna be attacking us with Necromancy, but he has far more lethal attacks, especially later on in the fight, where he can do some stuns and he can also output a lot of damage because he is using a Death Guard and he can Death Guard special attack you. Because of that, we just keep the Deflect Necro on for the entire boss fight. You're also gonna note here I haven't had to use any food and it's been a pretty relaxed affair. My Revo Bar is doing the vast majority of the work, which is kind of what we want. Now we're gonna get in to the first two and most important mechanics of the entire boss fight. First thing you'll notice is Vorkath is now moving backwards and he's preparing to shoot a kind of icy undead firewall towards us. This firewall will spawn exactly where it is on screen right now and it'll move out towards our character. And you're gonna notice here that I'm being hit about 756 damage per time that this hits and it should hit a total of either two or three times depending on where you're standing. As soon as this attack ends, Vorkath is actually gonna fly back down, and if you are in close to Vorkath, you're also gonna take a little bit of melee damage. If you wanna avoid the melee hit, you can move out and further away from the boss, and then you won't be hit by it, but my advice would actually be to just completely ignore it and don't move at all. This is because it doesn't do all that much damage, especially with this setup. It's very easy to tank, and you don't wanna swap your prayer either because Zimmer Eagle is still gonna be attacking you with Necromancy. So just keep your Necro Prayer on, your real bar should do all the work, and even with no defensives active, it isn't gonna do all that much damage. If you're fussed about the damage taken as well, you can also optionally use either Resonance or Disruption Shield. Either one of the two will work just to reduce one of the magic hits to none. That said, with this setup, you literally don't have to do anything. And there's one other mechanic that happened at the exact same time, and this one is cast by Zimmer Eagle. We're gonna watch back the same mechanic, but instead focus on the other mechanic that's going on on screen at the same time, which is this mist that I've marked on the screen. This mist is a warning that Zemmer Eagle is about to spawn some spires that are gonna go up from the ground and they're gonna deal a lot of damage to your character. With no damage reduction at all, this is gonna hit you about 4,000 damage, and if you want to, the advice is just to move out of the way of it, and the best way to do that is to just use the dive ability. I'll mark on screen a bunch of safe locations that you could dive to that are all really gonna be good options. Dive wherever you'd like and you'll be good to go. But alternatively, and what I do in this video, because we're trying to keep things as low effort as possible, is I'm gonna quite simply ignore it entirely. And with this setup, it's only gonna hit me about 2,700 damage, which isn't so bad, and that's an amount of damage that my Revo Bar is gonna make up for no problem at all. So we've got two big scary mechanics, and so far we haven't had to do anything about either of them. You'll also notice I've enlarged the extra action button on screen. And this arrow icon is gonna fire a ballista on any enemy character that is inside the arena. And it's gonna deal damage to everything that spawns. There are kind of a couple different mentalities for how to use this. There's one point where you need to make sure it's available, but outside of that one specific point, you can basically fire it as often as you would like. It's best used though whenever Zimorgul spawns a bunch of minions that will either attack you or they will shield Vorkath. 
So to deal with them most effectively, all you gotta do is click on that Ballista button and everything in the room is gonna take some damage. And now we're just gonna keep on attacking Vorkat. That's the bulk of the main mechanics. So yeah, all we're gonna do is hang out, let our viewer take the wheel, and there really isn't a whole lot to this part of the boss fight. It does get a little more intense later on, but for now, we're just gonna try to get Vorkath to about half life points, dealing with the exact same existing mechanics. Vorkath also has some dragon fire attacks, but we don't really have to worry about them all that much. They're not gonna hit particularly hard, especially in normal mode, and they're not worth like prayer flicking to or anything like that. It's just kind of damage that you are forced to take. Up to this point, we're almost halfway through the Vorkath part of the boss fight, and I have not had to use any food. My Revo Bar is completely healing me up, so we're big chilling thus far. If you ever see a big shield around Vorkath like you do right now, that means that a shielder has spawned. And you'll actually see there's one on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. I'll point at it with an arrow. This is a perfect example of a good time to use the Ballista, because if I wanted to, I could just go back and click on the shielder. He doesn't really have any life points, but alternatively, I'm going to click on the Ballista button, and you're going to see in just a second that the shielder is now completely and utterly defeated. Now, it's the exact same mechanics as before. The Revo Bar is doing everything, so we have absolutely nothing to worry about, and we're just going to chill. As soon as Warcath reaches half life points, you do not want to use the Ballista anymore. You want to save it and make sure that it is available and it is not on cooldown because the next part of the boss fight, you actually will have to use the Ballista at a specific time, or you'll take a lot of damage. When Vorkath has about 40% life points remaining, he is going to fly into the air, and Zemur Eagle is going to say, cut them down without mercy. And at this point, Zemur Eagle's shield is actually going to go away for a little bit, so you can get started on dealing some damage. As soon as Vorkath flies away here, you want to make sure that you fire the Ballista. And in just a second, you're going to see Vorkath reappear and get slammed onto the ground. If you don't use the Ballista, Vorkath will also reappear at this exact instance, but the entire arena will also be filled with ice, and you're going to get a big magic hit. If for whatever reason your Ballista is on cooldown, you don't need to panic or teleport out, just make sure your life points are extremely high, and this would be one point that I would elect to put on Deflect from Magic. If you do that, it's not going to one-shot you from full HP, and you can resume attacking. Just make sure that after that attack hits, you're going back to Deflect Necromancy. As soon as Vorkath rematerializes on the ground, we're now into the most difficult part of the boss fight, and my advice for this entire section is just to keep your life points very high. I would say you want at least 10,000 life points for this entire section. We're going to resume attacking Vorkath as soon as he's attackable, and let's just continue spending our stacks as much as possible. But yeah, you can take a sneaky high amount of damage for this section, so keep the life points high and you won't have anything to worry about. You're going to notice here that I'm trying to use my Ballista pretty often in this section because there are a lot of zombies around the room and a lot of healers and a lot of shielders, and firing the Ballista is just going to handle all of them for me. But you'll see it's the exact same mechanics in this section of the boss fight. There's really nothing special going on here. The Revo Bar is keeping us alive, it's keeping our life points relatively high, and it's giving us enough damage reduction that we don't really have to move for any of the mechanics. Really, I'm just focused on spending my stacks and keeping my life points where they need to be. Vorkath only has 60,000 life points left at this point, but now we've got another mechanic, which is the poison that is all around the room. On phase two, the poison you'll get is green, and then on the last phase, the poison is pink. It doesn't appear there's any difference between these two poisons, uh, but if you stand on them, you are going to take an absolute ton of damage. In normal mode, it's about 2,000 every single game tick. The poison can spawn directly on top of your character, but it doesn't happen very often. So usually what you're going to do for this is, well, nothing. You're just going to continue standing exactly where you are, but be mindful that if you do have to move for any reason or you want to, that your best bet is to just use the dive ability to pinpoint exactly where you want to land. Because dive is targetable, it's a great option, but you want to avoid using abilities like Surge that can put you on a random tile that could end up completely killing you. Because we applied a death mark as we ran into the room, as soon as Vorkath reaches 30,000 life points, he's actually going to get insta-killed, and we've actually completed the hardest part of this boss fight. And now, we pretty much get to AFK. We're going to click on Zemmer Eagle, we're going to continue to fire our Ballista as often as possible, and that is absolutely everything we need to do. We're going to sit here, we're going to whittle away his life points until the boss fight ends. If you wanted to, Zemmer Eagle is not classed as undead, so you could take off the Salve Amulet and replace it with an Amulet of Souls, if you so desire to. But as long as using Powder of Protection, it doesn't really matter, you'll get the same damage reduction either way, you're just going to be missing out on a little bit of power bonus if you don't do the Amulet Swap. And yeah, we're just completely sitting here, completely relaxed, nothing important to do here other than continuing to target Zemmer Eagle and continue to fire the Ballista as well. And just like that, Vorkath and Zemurgle are completely and utterly gone. And this method is kind of insane. Our kill time was 4 minutes and 42 seconds, and that includes the time it took to get to the point of power. We didn't use a single food at all. We didn't use any expensive reaver scrolls. And there is a perfect boss kill at Zemurgle and Vorkath. So anyway, I hope this video helped some of you guys out. Best of luck on your kills, and I will catch you in the next one.